So many churches spend all their time fussing and fuming about piddly internal stuff that doesn't even matter when they need to be lost in the preservation of and proclamation of the Word of God. I read a book called Amusing Ourselves to Death. I want to share a little of it with you by Neil Postman. 170 pages of great insight. He writes, Today we must look at the city of Las Vegas, Nevada as a metaphor of our national character and aspiration. Isn't that interesting? Its symbol is a 30-foot high cardboard picture of a slot machine and a chorus girl. For Las Vegas is a city entirely devoted to the idea of entertainment and as such proclaims the spirit of a culture in which all public discourse increasingly takes the form of entertainment. Our religion, politics, news, athletics, education and commerce have been transformed into congenial adjuncts of show business. The result is that we are a people on the verge of amusing ourselves to death. End quote. He further writes, the media of communication available to a culture are a dominant influence on the formation of the culture's intellectual and social preoccupation. What he's saying is that we've been shaped by television. Writing, he says, freezes speech, and in so doing gives birth to the gram grammarian, the logician, the rhetorician, the historian, the scientist. As soon as you put something in writing, it has to be logical, it has to be something you can study with depth, it has to have evidence and proof and substantiation. And content is the issue, and it, it produces thinking, intellectualizing, cognition. He makes the point that a typographic society that deals with print creates cognitive, intellectual culture. Where you, for example, have mass of people who go sit, stand for seven hours and listen to the Lincoln-Douglas debates. Three hours by Lincoln, three hours by Douglas, and a half an hour rebuttal by each. You show me a crowd in America that'd stand and listen to a seven-hour debate between two men on political issues. Huh. How about Nehemiah 8? They stood up and read the scriptures all day long and the people stood from dawn till sunset and listened to the Bible being read. Try that. Try that. Now they want 30-minute sermonettes for Christianettes with histrionics and jokes from beginning to end. Why? We've shifted to a telegraphic, photographic society. It has shaped our culture with the result that the content of much of our public discourse has become dangerous nonsense. And you can listen to the typical TV preacher, and maybe he says something profound once in 30 minutes, and maybe he never says it in 30 weeks. There's no reasoned rhetoric, profound logic. Exposition is turned off in favor of explosion, sex, murders, crashing cars. Wild. Compare, he says, modern preaching, Oral Roberts et al., Jimmy Swagger, and he named Falwell, Grant, everybody that he sees on TV. Compare them with George Whitfield, Jonathan Edwards, and Charles G. Finney if you want to know the difference between the mindset of people today. Absolutely unbelievable. Jonathan Edwards wrote a treatise concerning religious affections in 1746 as one of the most profound works in American history. And he would stand and read out of a, off of a page his message with no intonation and people would cry to God for mercy. Why? Because they had been trained to think. Now you stand up and give them a reasoned approach to scripture, they're asleep in three minutes because nobody has been shot, nothing has blown up, nothing has exploded, and nobody has said, now this, and a cartoon character bounced through a McDonald's store. They can't deal with it. They can't deal with it. Well, you're getting the message. Today's preaching is contentless. And TV trivializes everything. Absolutely everything is trivialized by television. Even religion is trivialized. You have some guy up there trying to preach, and as soon as he's done, on comes a commercial cartoon. Even the news is trivialized. Well, today an airliner was shot out of the sky over the Persian Gulf and 290 people perished. Now this. And on comes a beer ad. The trivialization of everything. He asked the question, does Postman in the book, when's the last time you heard something on the news that changed anything in your life? The answer is never. What do we do with all that trivia that we can't use? We invent games like Trivial Pursuit so we can use it. We got it, we might as well use it. It has no relation to life. Devastating the gospel presentation. Where is the Jonathan Edwards of our day? The problem in our day is, his name is Amy Grant. 
The ultimate entertainer is the ultimate in Christianity. People are into emotional gratification. They're into popularity. They want to feel, they don't want to think. Christian church platforms look like Las Vegas stages. Vaudeville has replaced the scripture. No context, no content. I don't think Christianity can work on television because the medium of TV trivializes it. I mean, how serious can you get when you're watching it and some guy starts to talk about Christ and if you want, you can flip to something else and see somebody shot or kissed or thrown over a cliff or a stupid ad for deodorant and then you flip back. Trivializes everything. You say, why are you telling us? Because this challenges us, folks. We have a tremendous task. We are committed totally to teaching God's Word. We got a lot of empty seats. I'll tell you right now that if we had a Las Vegas show on this stage, they wouldn't be empty. This is the mindset of our day. It isn't like it was 20 years ago. People don't want to read books. They don't want to think. We're going to have a tough time in this culture. We better get about the business of doing what we ought to do and not be standing around looking at our own navels, trying to figure out our own little internal problems. Struggling together to preserve the sacred, serious truth of God may not be a battle against outsiders only, it may be a battle against insiders. Struggle against the shallow churches that want to trivialize the truth and reduce it to amusement. Struggle to proclaim may not just be a contest for men's hearts, it may be a contest for men's minds. And we're going to have a mindless generation. We've already got one. They just want entertainment, nothing more. And each new one will be worse. And then you stand up like I do for 50 minutes and try to communicate the Word of God to these people. And except for the Holy Spirit, somehow allowing it to sink in, it just does not compute. What a check. We better be aggressive. Listen, we better be aggressive. We're in a dangerous time in our church history. I received in the mail an interesting letter out laying out a course that is being taught. I want to explain it to you very briefly. It charted the history of churches, great churches. Their peak period of growth in a great ministry was 20 to 25 years, right where we are since I've come. That was the apex. From then on, everything went downhill. When a church is born, they said it takes one person to reach one, so the ratio is one to one. They're excited, they're enthused, they're thrilled, they're blessed. And we, we saw this church double every two years, for the first almost 10 years. One to one to one to one. We were doubling. It took one to reach one. They said usually by the third year, it takes three people to reach one, and the process of outreach is slowing down as the church gets more internally complex. By 10 years, it takes eight persons to reach one. 15 to 20 years, some, somewhere between eight and 15 perhaps, by the time a church is 50 years old, it takes 89 people to reach one. Why? The early years concentrate on evangelism. That evangelism takes the church to a peak. Then the church becomes preoccupied with pastoral care, preoccupied with shepherding, preoccupied with budget, preoccupied with internal systems, and it eats itself up. It can't maintain its unity anymore because it doesn't have a common enemy that it's fighting. It's narcissistic. Evangelism isn't the reason to exist. Fellowship, teaching, caring, socializing, interacting, counseling. It stops confronting the world, it shrivels.